What's up, everyone? This is Seth with The Landing Page Dudes, and I hope you're having an awesome Sunday. Today, I am dragging you back with me into a time when I was a teenager, and I worked for Garmin inside of a retail store selling GPS products. So this brand really does drive back nostalgia for me. And to make things even weirder, <laughs> my dad was head over heels in love with Garmin products. This was the time before the phone GPS, so in order to navigate to places, you had a Garmin or a TomTom -tom. inside of your car. It was this big, bulky thing. And I kid you not, we had enough Garmin GPS devices to equip every car on our block. So fast forward 20 years today, and here I am. I'm looking for a smartwatch on Garmin's website for my cousin, who is an avid golfer. And guess what? I stepped into a time machine. The website has hardly changed. Looking at the top of their product page, it's messy. There's no clear structure. The menu, text, and product image, they, they hog about 70% of the screen. The crucial stuff like the add to cart button or the color options are pushed out of sight. And when you try to change the watch color, you can't even see the product image. You can't see it done in real time. You have to scroll up or scroll down. And we all know that's not good for anything. It's not good because it confuses customers and it obviously hits your conversion rates. Now, Garmin's a big time deal. They're a $20 billion company with a quarter of the market share. I'm not here to play Sunday quarterback, but it is shocking to see the contrast between their online presence and the effort they put into their retail stores where they pour hundreds of millions of into displays, training, and shelf life. If you've been to a Walmart or to a Best Buy, you know what I'm talking about. So I decided to do a little Sunday DIY project, and I was gonna spruce up the product page for Garmin. My goals were very clear. I wanted to clear up the clutter, bring the add to cart above the fold, and give the ability for users to choose their watch color without losing sight of the product. And here's what I came up with. On your left is the before and on your right is the after. Let's walk through what's changed and how these tweaks could help improve sales. And hey, Garmin, if you're listening, don't sue me for this. Hire us instead. I will give you this mobile Figma for free if you want. The first part of the design I tackled was the menu and announcement bar. Understanding the importance of mobile first approach, it was crucial for us to minimize this space yet still maintain its legibility. I found their positioning for their announcement bar to be very weird. So I moved it to the top, you know, that's the conventional placement and that's where people draw their immediate viewer attention. Whenever we visit a website, we're now looking at that top announcement bar to see, am I getting free shipping? You know, what is their offer? Uh, so it just didn't make sense to have it tucked away under the menu. It's that hierarchy does not make sense. Also, the sports and fitness golfing text had to go. It took up space, it didn't contribute to the overall design or user experience, and in terms of real estate, it was sitting on very expensive real estate while not being worthy of it. Next, I optimized the product image and thumbnails for mobile viewing. I employed super intuitive navigation arrows that indicate to the user that more images are available. Along with this, I was able to add this new UI that we've seen, and, and it is super intuitive as well. It's a progress bar below uh, that advances as a user swipes through the images. This arrangement, sorry, this arrangement opened up room for a lot of details that we could put above the fold while ensuring the product image maintained very big, very visual, and you still had the ability to see other images as well. For the main call to action area, my objective was to structure the content, uh, you know, establish hierarchy in the former design, things are just all over the place, and align all the elements to the left. Given that we naturally read from left to right, this alignment is more intuitive. While having this center alignment can work in certain design contexts, I personally think for landing pages, it's better to stick with convention. Another notable improvement here was the addition of reviews for social proof. You know, we wanted to build trust and when users click on these reviews, they're directly anchored to the review section when clicked. When it came to pricing, clarity and size was paramount. In the previous design, um, the pricing was small and stacked 
you know, on top of each other, creating a visual disconnect. So to solve this, I added a highlighter colored badge indicating the savings amount. This badge is dynamic and it adapts based on the price inputs. Uh, so it's super user friendly. It allows people to understand their savings automatically without having to pull out a calculator. And the way the pricing is arranged from left to right, big and small, is very clear to read. Now to the exciting part. I brought the color variants above the fold, enabling users to select their preferred color and view the corresponding product images without scrolling. Moreover, I added dynamic text for rapid color identification. If you noticed on the current design, if you go to the website and you want to click on a color, it doesn't tell you what the color is. There's not a text or even a light box or an overlay that says what the color is. You literally have to select the color and wait for the page to load to see its title. And this hurts your conversion rates. It, you know, having to go up and down to see what your colors are, it's just not a good way. Now, to wrap up this design, I aimed for a clean, tidy, and sophisticated look uh, by using three unique selling propositions and a prominent green call to action button. Under that call to action, I included an installment payment option, Shopify reports, even a lot of the companies themselves, but I always go for Shopify reports because they're non-biased. They have shown that, you know, buy now, pay later, apps like Klarna, Affirm, Sezzle, uh, they have shown to increase conversion rates in average order value, sometimes average order value by over 20% and conversion rates as high as 40%. So having that in that top fold is very important. The customer will want to maybe purchase two watches because, you know, the flexibility might even encourage users to purchase for their dad, their brother, their sister, or their friend. So it's important to have that there. I hope this breakdown provides an insight into my design thought process. I literally did this this morning. So it was a very quick job. You know, just remember that effective web designs marries aesthetics with functionality. You know, and we have to keep the user experience at the forefront. If you're going to be designing, you have to be designing for mobile. The customer has to be first and the information has to be laid out in a structure that is mobile first. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. I will be back again shortly with another video. And I thank you for taking your time and not only watching this video, but supporting our channel. We want it to grow. And it's all because of you guys. We are happy to make these videos. Have a good one.